Hi, good morning. My name is Tom Conkle. I'm a cybersecurity engineer with Optic Cyber Solutions. I wanted to take a few moments today to talk to you about the Supplier Performance Risk System, SP800-171 Worksheet, um, otherwise known as the SPURS Worksheet. The SPURS Worksheet is gained in conversation lately simply because of a recent uh, DFAR interim rule that went into effect in November of 2020. Uh, the interim rule basically requires that any organization, whether it's a prime or a subcontractor, bidding on DOD work to upload a um, SPURS worksheet to the SPURS website to attest to their cybersecurity program. Uh, the SPURS worksheet is a next step in evolution, if you will, of the DFARS uh, and expands on the original uh, DFARS rule that simply required that DOD contractors uh, attest that they have implemented the 800-171 controls. So now we're going one step further from just the attestment to performing a self-assessment to demonstrate which of the controls have been implemented um, within the contract or with, by the contractor um, prior to submitting for uh, that DOD work. So before Taking a look at the worksheet, let's take a moment to talk about the, the SPURS portal itself. Um, the SPURS portal has existed for a while now. It's been a way for uh, DOD to help track and assess DOD contractors' performance on previous contracts. Um, the requirement as levied in, levied, uh, in the recent DFAR rule change um, did expand uh, the SPURS portal to include tracking uh, the performance of the cybersecurity capabilities of of organizations or contractors bidding on RFP work. Um, the portal is completely queryable by contracting officers so they, they can see your SPURS score uh, as it's uploaded and evaluated to make the determination uh, for uh, during the award process uh, of uh, proposal evaluations. Um, you as a DOD contractor though um, only have the ability to upload your worksheet as well as some demographic information on the worksheet so who the company is uh, information about the company information about the system that will be um, providing services or being used to provide services to the DOD for the contract that's being bid on itself okay and then we have more information or the URL to the SPURS portal at the end of the presentation um, so that you can up, be able to upload your completed worksheet once you're finished with it. Uh, the interim DFAR rule um, does identify or include a requirement that uh, the DOD must identify what type of assessment is required. The most common type, and the reason we're talking about the SPURS worksheet, um, is it is the most common type of assessment that's required by DOD. It's a basic assessment. Um, they can require medium and high as well, um, depending on the uh, uh, risks uh, for the, the type of work that will be uh, performed by the contractor. Um, however, like I mentioned, basic is the most common. It is a self-assessment, and the self-assessment is conducted through uh, completing the worksheet. Um, the confidence level the DOD has in your cybersecurity capability directly comes from the type of assessment that's being performed and not the score. Um, so by doing a basic or a self-assessment, you have a low confidence rating. Um, that confidence rating can only be increased by having DOD come and conduct either a medium or high assessment. However, uh, again, DOD understands this and has still said that you know basic will be required for most, most of the RFPs that are coming out. Um, so now that we have an understanding about the DFARS rule um, and SPURS itself, let's talk about the worksheet. Um, the worksheet is derived from the 110 security controls in uh, SP 800-171. Um, and uh, from the met scoring methodology that DOD uh, published in June of 2020, we know that all organizations start with a score of 110 and then points are deducted for security controls that are not implemented. Uh, how many points are deducted depends on the security control itself and the weight of that control that DOD has assigned. Another key thing to note about performing or yeah, performing the self-assessment is that security control 3.12.4 must be in place in order to complete the assessment. And that's simply because 3.12.4 requires an organization to have a system security plan or an SSP that describes and captures 
features and security capabilities of the systems that will be used in support of the DoD contract if it's awarded. Um, so if you don't have an F SSP that, that defines your security capabilities, um, you don't have that platform to do the assessment from. So that would be the first place to start um, when completing the uh, assessment. Okay. Another thing, as we noted, contracting officers are responsible for determining the score uh, appropriate for their contract. So there is no minimum score requirement. Um, there is just a requirement that you upload your completed worksheet to the SPURS website. Okay. So to help in completing uh, the self-assessment, Optic we have cre has created a uh, worksheet here to help automate the scoring process. As I mentioned, each of the security controls are weighted um, based off of a DOD weighting system. Um, so this spreadsheet helps in automating that approach or that, that capability. So you can simply go through the implementation status, identify which control, security controls are implemented or not implemented, and the worksheet will um, tally your score after all 110 security controls have been assessed by you. Uh, we've also provided the ability for you to upload or include comments. Uh, comments are simply there, a way for you to capture why you uh, responded the way that you did uh, to an implementation uh, specific security control. Um, it, that comments are not uploaded to the SPURS website and not required um, and again are just provided for your convenience. Okay so in summary uh, we know now know that the interim rule change is what has led to the SPURS worksheet being important, uh, requiring DOD contractors, both primes and subs, to upload a uh, SPURS, completed SPURS worksheet to the SPURS portal where the contracting officer will use it to determine uh, if uh, the cybersecurity capabilities of the respondents meet their expectations for securing the data that's required in process or performance of that contract. Okay, so the security can assessment, the, the assessment score is determined based off of your implementation status of the 110-171 controls as defined in your organization's SSP. So if you don't have an SSP, uh, you won't be able to score your system and that's the first place to start. Um, as promised, we have some resources here to help you um, in completing the self-assessment. Uh, first off, from, an op from the OPTIC website, we have a 171 profile will help you create an SSP if you don't already have your SSP. Uh, and the SPURS worksheet that we've talked about today is also provided uh, to help automate that scoring approach for you. Uh, we've also included here a link to the SPURS portal, as well as some links to additional information provided by NIST on 800 171 um, and how to perform an assessment against 800 171. Okay, thank you.